the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the Galaxy S22 Ultra? Which one has the better camera system and what are the differences? Hey guys, my name is Vic with Phone Arena and in the past few days I have been out and about taking photos and videos with both these phones and now that I've got the images it's time to take a closer look and see whether this new iPhone lives up to the hype and whether it can actually beat the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So this is the front camera on the new iPhone 14 Pro Max compared against the camera on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and right here in the viewfinder I can see quite the difference. First, because the iPhone's front camera is much wider and this in my case is a good thing. Also, I have the bright day sunlight behind me and the Galaxy kind of burns out the highlights here, which is not a great thing, but it is what it is. The iPhone also gets pretty bright, so it's super easy to see the viewfinder and a very nice thing. And let me walk a bit faster. This is the kind of video stabilization that you get with the front camera. What a big difference in video with the front camera. And now let's look at the selfies. Now it strikes me how the iPhone gets colors better. The crisp white of my t-shirt being a great example. It just appears muddy on the Galaxy while we have a lot more color, deeper blacks and quite a bit of sharpness on the iPhone. Similarly on the second selfie where colors appear much more vibrant on the iPhone. And this third one was captured at night and you can appreciate the wider perspective and also how the iPhone can capture more light. Alright, moving to the main camera, the 14 Pro Max comes with a 65% larger sensor than the previous model with 48 megapixel resolution and this is a big deal. But by default it still captures 12 megapixel photos. The reason being those files are smaller and you can still benefit from the larger sensor. But let me make a quick detour here to tell you that if you are a photo enthusiast you just have to try shooting a pro raw file with the full 48 megapixel resolution. Now be warned a single photo in that mode might run more than 100 megabytes in size but the amount of detail you get compared to the 12 megapixel jpeg file is just insane. But stay tuned for a video dedicated just to that topic coming soon. In this comparison we'll stick with just the automatic default settings, 12 megapixel photos on both phones. So comparing images from the main cameras on the iPhone and the Galaxy it's easy to spot a few differences. We saw often on a sunny day the iPhone burn out the highlights, notice the building on the left here and it also crushes the details a bit too much, notice the shrub on the right, while the Galaxy handles them better with a higher dynamic range. Another thing to notice on the iPhone is that it applies a bit too much sharpening for our taste so images can look a bit over sharpened and most of the time we actually prefer the slightly softer look from the Galaxy. Also look at the difference in colors on this picture taken with the ultra wide camera. We have a warm tonality in the Galaxy while the iPhone has colder colors. And if you ask me which one looks closer to reality I would have to go with the iPhone. Take a look at a few more shots with the main camera. The reality is that sometimes the Galaxy has the better shot like here with the water where colors on the iPhone turned out wrong for some reason. And at other times the image from the iPhone looks better, like me here climbing the stairs where colors are more pleasing on the iPhone. So it is hard to name a winner here. At dusk and lower light we can see a big difference in the colors between these two. The iPhone goes for these warmer shots while the Galaxy has colder colors that might be a bit closer to reality. With this larger sensor however Apple can now crop in and give you optical quality 2x picture without a dedicated 2x lens and we just don't know why Samsung has not done the same thing it also has a high res sensor but at the moment 2x photos from the iPhone have way cleaner detail and this might just be my favorite old new iPhone feature as it's really nice having this nifty 50 focusing distance. Alright, daytime photos looked good on both but what about pictures taken at night? In this first photo buildings are well exposed on both phones but the sky in the galaxy looks blotchy and just look at that wire hanging from the building. It's completely destroyed on the galaxy. And once again on the second shot you can see the galaxy has trouble with the night sky which looks blotchy. 
And in this next picture of our office building at night, you can see the outlines of individual tiles on the iPhone, while the Galaxy blurs those details. Take a look at a few more nighttime photos. The iPhone usually captures a bit more light and appears sharper, but the Galaxy also keeps up well in many shots. Using the ultra wide camera at night is typically not a great idea, and we see the same issue with the blotchy sky at night on the Galaxy, but for all else, the ultra wide camera on it captures more light, and in this photo of the beach, it also has done a better job with the white balance. So, most of the time, we actually prefer the ultra wide camera on the Galaxy. Galaxy over the iPhone. And here are a few macro shots. The iPhone has improved quite a bit and it looks nice and sharp. So Apple might have all these upgrades, but the telephoto camera on the iPhone 14 Pro Max remains unchanged, meaning you get a three times zoom lens and you have a similar zoom lens on the Galaxy. In a direct comparison, these capture similar amounts of detail, but the real difference maker is the additional 10x periscope zoom lens on the Galaxy. It just blows the iPhone away in these longer zoom ranges. It's perfect for capturing wildlife, animals, and just objects far away in general. With the Galaxy, you can zoom in an incredible 100 times, while with the iPhone, you have far less zooming options. Speaking of zoom, the new 2x zoom option on the iPhone is a godsend for portrait mode photos. At 3x, you can take nice looking portraits, but you need to be very far away from your subject. And if you're in a bar or in a place where you cannot step back, you just need this 2x view. So this is a big win for the iPhone. Of course, both phones also capture portraits at 1x using the main camera and then also at 3x. The Galaxy works better with inanimate objects in portrait mode, while the iPhone is still a bit finicky, you have to be at just the right distance in order for portrait mode to even work. Now, Apple also made a big deal about the new action mode, which it calls gimbal-like stabilization. But in reality, Apple might be catching up with Samsung, which has had a similar mode for years, called Super Steady. What Apple did not mention at the event was that action mode crops in significantly and it won't be able to record in 4K, so the video quality drops a bit when you use that mode, it drops down to 2.8K. But that is to be expected, and Samsung does the same thing with Super Steady, where it actually uses a crop from the ultra-wide camera. Still, we would only use this new action mode when you really need it, and most of the time, if you're just walking around, you'll be better off with just the automatic built-in stabilization, which at least gives you great 4K quality on the iPhone. Apple's cinematic mode gets a nice upgrade with 4K resolution and a choice of 24 and 30 FPS now, while portrait mode video on the Galaxy only supports 1080p resolution and also only works with faces, which is quite the limitation. Take a look at the side-by-side -side difference. Hey guys, so this is the video recording quality with the main rear camera on the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Galaxy S22 Ultra using 4K video resolution. Let me know if you see any differences in the video stabilization. But now let me just quickly flip the camera so you can see what I am seeing. All right. Next up, let's switch to the ultra wide camera. Okay, this is the ultra wide camera. All right, nighttime video recording, iPhone 14 Pro Max, Galaxy S22 Ultra, the moment of truth. Which one does better at night? Let me know. And first, let's start by moving the phones around. I can see, have a beautiful view of the, of the sea, but one of these phones is definitely darker. And this is not a good thing. So you can see the iPhone capturing the much brighter picture. And it's raining a bit. But let's keep on going. Now facing towards the street where you have these colorful lights. And a bit of flaring on the iPhone. That is what it's known for. The Galaxy has less of it, but it's much darker. So each one their own. 
but while the iPhone still has overall better video quality, it also comes with one persistent issue that has plagued iPhones for years, and that is flaring at night. And unfortunately, it looks just as bad on the iPhone 14 Pro as on the previous models. Whether you go with the iPhone or the Galaxy, you want to protect your phone well, which is a great segue to this video sponsor, Subcase. Their UB Pro Mac case for the iPhone 14 series offers superb protection thanks to its rugged, shock-absorbing design, and as you can guess by the name, the case is MagSafe compatible. As you can see, the magnets inside are super strong, which is important if you need to charge your phone while driving, for example. The cool thing about this case is that it comes with a kickstand, which you can use to watch videos, for example. Plus, check this out. It also doubles as a ring holder, which is so convenient. We also love that the UB Pro Mag case comes with a built-in screen protector that prevents scratches and cracks with no compromise to touch sensitivity. And last but not least, it includes a belt clip holster that can rotate 360 degrees for your convenience. And right now is a great time to get this case. Subcase is running a 25% off hero discount for teachers, students, military, first responders and healthcare workers. So check out the link below for all the details and get yourself the UB Pro Mac case right now or just type iPhone 14 case by Subcase in Amazon to explore all the cases the company offers and pick your favorite. So at the end of the day, is the new iPhone 14 Pro Max a better camera than the Galaxy S22 Ultra? Well, in some cases, yes, it is. The front camera on the iPhone is improved a lot with better colors and better video. The main camera has a more contrasty and sharper look and it captures more light at night. The new 2X mode is also great and gives the iPhone a big advantage for portrait mode photos and video is also still better on the iPhone. The Galaxy, on the other hand, has less artificial over-sharpening in photos and oftentimes does better with the white balance. Still has a much better zoom lens, especially at longer ranges, and has a portrait mode that actually works well with objects that are not people. So I wish I could just point at just one of these two phones and say, this is the winner. But in reality, it's about picking your priorities in a camera and just going with the one that suits you best. So which one would you pick and why? Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel here, Phone Arena, to see our upcoming iPhone 14 tests. This is Vic signing out and I'll see you in the next one.